Here's the backyard scene you're probably familiar with. You watered your plants, but where did all that water go? Let's find out by looking below the ground into the soil. Soil is made up of particles of broken down rocks. These particles have open spaces between them, which are called voids. When water is added to soil, these voids create a pathway through which the water flows. This tendency of water to flow through soil is called permeability. Soil particles can be of different sizes. Some are large, while others are small. Large particles have larger void spaces through which water can flow easily. They have high permeability. On the other hand, smaller soil particles have smaller void spaces and thus lower permeability. This can be easily explained using a simple experiment. Three types of soil samples are taken, gravel, sand, and clay. They are placed in funnels and 100 milliliters of water is poured into each one. We can see that water flows quickly through gravel. This is because gravel has large soil particles and hence higher permeability. When water is added to the sand, it takes more time to flow compared to gravel. This is because sand has smaller sized particles than gravel. On the other hand, clay has the smallest soil particles among these samples and thus the lowest permeability. Even after an hour of testing, water has hardly flowed through the clay. Permeability can be linked to many engineering problems and solutions. One of them is dam failure by seepage. Over the last 50 years, approximately 20% of dam failures in the United States can be attributed to seepage. Seepage is the slow escape of liquid through porous material or voids. Water flowing through a dam exerts a force on soil particles, washing them out through an unexpected discharge point. When highly permeable cavities or layers of gravel or coarse sand are present in the dam foundation, it may lead to heavy seepage, or in other words, piping. In this experiment, we have two boxes, one filled with only clay and the other with a sand layer sandwiched between clay layers. When water is added, the presence of a sand layer leads to the faster escape of the water. We can easily see the amount of water stored in the beaker after a period of testing, and also the lowering of the water level in the right box. The same phenomenon occurs during seepage under a dam, which can ultimately lead to dam failure. Piping within and beneath the dam body were identified as causes of the Teton Dam failure in 1976. The dam failed with catastrophic consequences. 80 billion gallons of water rushed out from the reservoir, destroying two towns, displacing 25,000 people, and causing approximately $400 million in damages. Therefore, instead of having only larger sized particles of soil, it is customary to have particles of all sizes. This ensures a minimal flow of water, thereby ensuring less permeability.